Hi, welcome back to our learning about video game art again. In these sessions, I'm going to demonstrate the workflow for setting up a 3D game character that can be controlled within a real-time environment. As a start, I will briefly describe the key working steps for getting your bipad game character ready. After that, I will show you how to prototype a playable game character within Unity's environment in less than 15 minutes. To do so, First, you will need to buy your game character with the simplest skeletal framework that merely made out of a chain joints. The practice here will be very different from the conventional 3D animation control rig, as this type of setup is only good for linear playback purposes in Maya environment. It will not suitable for real-time animation system in game engine. Although our rig is merely a set of joints, you ought to name them with an appropriate naming convention that helps to distinguish the left-right components. In addition, you should plan the placement of your skeletal joint in advance. You can consider the good old-fashioned approach that I do by having it on a piece of paper. After binding the skeletal joints to your character, you must weight the skin appropriately. To do so, I would highly recommend you to refer to this demonstrated practice that I had posted in this channel. And to work in Unity, you have to change your Maya's file working unit to centimeter. With everything in place, you would need to export your scene into the format of FBX. And in our context, we don't need an animation node to be included during the export. So, in one glance, here is a summary of the workflow for getting your game character ready for a game engine like Unity. And for this demo, I'll be using a free version of Unity at 4.2.1. To try out these demonstrations, let's create a whole new Unity project. Simply give it a name. And as a short demo, we won't need any of these packages. Before we begin, let's change our layout to tall if you haven't do so. Next, you will need to copy the given working files into our assets folder that are found in the Unity project which we had created just now. Among this given folder of assets, there is this folder which we reserve for you to place in your export game character and the texture files. Once done, let's head back to Unity and you will see Unity is updating its project window and folders. Alright, everything seems to be in place. Let's scale down the display size of our icons. Next, let's dock our game view window at the bottom. In this exercise, we don't have a game level to begin with, so let's create a polygonal client for temporarily mocking the floor level. And for rendering efficiency, let's turn off the cast shadow feature. Next, go to this folder, drag your export game character onto the hierarchy window. You can hit the shortcut key F for framing closer to view your game mesh in the scene. As you can see, for now, the game view camera was being placed behind the game character by default. Select the main camera at the hierarchy window and let's set it to the front facing. You can choose to set the main camera's viewing angle tilted down slightly. Ok, next we will need a light to light up our scene. Simply create a new directional light. 
and change its direction to a more favorable angle with the rotation manipulator. Leave the intensity as default and turn on the shadow. And set the shadow to very high resolution if your machine can take it. Alright, in the second half of our exercise, we are going to map out our skeletal joints with mechanism animation system that found in Unity. Select the character mesh at a hierarchy window in the inspector. Click Select again. Do set the animation type to humanoid. Then define the avatars from our game model. Next, let's dive into its configure menu set and just click Save. Okay, here you will see how well is our game character's skeletal joints being mapped out with the mechanism animation system. As long as you have named your joints with an appropriate naming convention, there shouldn't be any problem. However, should there is a problem that a joint was not being automatically calibrated within the system, you can always manually reassign it with the right slot. In addition, mechanism will automatically enforce a nice T-pose for us. If this is not happening by default, you have to manually invoke the function again. Next, you can apply the muscle system in Mechanim for your game character and testing out how flexible it is that your character can be deformed. Let's reset it back to its original state and click down to the exit from here as that's not the focus of this tutorial. Alright, let's continue to set up our game character. First, we will need to add some physics components such as rigid body and a capsule collider to our character. In the rigid body, do set our character's mass to 100, then freezes its rotation of XYZ. Next, let's set the capsule collider with a bigger radius for encapsulating our character. And do change its height and translate Y accordingly. Okay, although the collider does not fully cover the horns, but it is okay for now. Next, we will need to add the component of animator. Send, followed by creating an animation controller. Do rename the controller to something identical. For instance, I have named my to my beast controller. Next, let's assign the controller into the animator component and set the avatar for the animator with your own game characters. This avatar for a character was created in Unity by default when you imported your game mesh in. Okay, next, double click on the controller for opening up its interface. In Unity, the controller is actually a state machine, and before we proceed to set up the idle state, Let's have a little preview with the mocap data that are being downloaded from the Unity store. By selecting the animation clip of Idol, you can actually preview the motion. In addition, you can substitute it with your own game character by simply dragging the prefab into the preview window. Now, instead of keep previewing it here, let's drag this piece of animation data onto the slate. Then, let's the animator convert it into a state. And before we hit the play button, just remember to check on the animate physics in the animator component. Now by hitting the play button, you can immediately see the state of idle being set up instantly with Unity. 
let's take a break for now before we moving on to the second part of the demonstrations where we will focus on creating the control state of walk and run. See you at part two.